This is spectacular. They've come back north. I can't believe it. It's wonderful. They're on the dam wall at Twin Dams. They're coming down. They might have a drink here. Oh, this is just brilliant. Now, I can't move too much from here because Wendy, of course, has very dodgy signal in this area. But right now, we're in the perfect position to view them from all sides. Oh, isn't this fantastic? How very special. There they are, having a nice drink. I can just hear them going... Yeah, others coming down towards where the hippo is, others heading towards us. But that is by far the most beautiful part of the shot that you're getting there. Isn't this wonderful? Oh, wow. Now, I think this is the Sands Pack, everybody. And the Sands Pack, of course, the, um, the one we saw the other day and the same one you were watching this morning, the Alpha has that dreadful injury on his back. Ancient looking dog. <laughs> Look at them in the water there. Now, Graham, you're wondering about what would attack a sick or injured wild dog. Graham, uh, hyenas, lions, leopards, anything you like. And you say, would the rest of the pack protect them? Yes, they would, to a certain extent. Look at that. <laughs> this is wonderful stuff. And they're all fanning out now, either side of the dam here. There's our hippo pal and the others. One of them has just uh, relieved himself on the banks there, which is, of course, completely disgusting. But must be done, I suppose. Oh, this is just brilliant. They're going to head north now, and I think we're going to have to drive at some speed to keep up with them. Yeah, the Alpha's on his way, actually. Let's just keep an eye out, because I think you'll probably find that there's quite a lot of general game around here. Oh, this is just brilliant. So we'll see what they do. I think they're probably going to start going on the hunt. Two of them have now, three of them have now headed up north. And Riti, you're wondering what they hunt. Will they hunt small to medium-sized antelope? Now, that's a fairly scientific, meaningless answer if you don't know what I'm talking about. But that's impala, uh, very small wildebeest uh, in this area of seldom zebra, uh, diker, uh, stiernbok, many scrub hares uh, get mm. smashed by these chaps. Mm. Look at them playing there. This is why dogs are such fun, because they're always moving. Okay, everybody, we're going to have to move now. Uh, if we do lose signal, then I apologize. I just don't want to lose them, because if they go moving from here, we're going to miss them. We're just going to scoot past Michael Grover. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. May you have a wonderful afternoon. Okay, let's just move up here. I'm just going to tell Siri, who's directing today, to watch out for the signal. So we could easily lose it in this area. Now, I'm not going to stick with the front of the pack. We're going to wait with the back of the pack here, the youngsters. And I'll tell you why. I think the, you know, the front of the pack, the adults, the three adults, will do a lot more in the way of hunting than 
the youngsters and that means that we disturb the hunt much less by staying at the back with the youngsters. This is fantastic. There they come. Uh, I believe we're going to head a... Here we have them. Just having a drink. These are all the youngsters. I don't see any adults. They're getting big now, of course, so it's difficult to tell which ones are adults and which ones are not. And they just love to play these things. That's why they are so much fun to watch. They never just lurk about doing absolutely nothing. Well, very seldom anyway. Gorgeous. Now, Laurie, you want to know how many dogs there are in the Sands Pack. Laurie, there are apparently, I think it's... 13, isn't it? 12 or 13? I think only three adults. And the rest are youngsters. There they go, past us now. What a stroke of absolute wondrous luck that we waited for them. Or we hoped that they'd come back, and they did. go and now we will try and follow them they're off some of them are running at quite a speed I'm gonna move now now Hannah you said they hunt at night no they don't they hunt now now is when they're hunting and they're moving now at quite a speed up this way they're definitely on the hunt right now. And uh, they hunt crepuscularly. In other words, they hunt during dusk and dawn. And they will normally kill... Whoa, hold on tight, everybody. They will normally hunt or normally kill once each or once at each time. Now, they're on the move now. We're just trying to stay with the back dog. We might be lucky to catch them kill. There we go, straight down the road. Siri, we might lose signal here. We're going to just stay with the dogs. We're not going to worry about that. There they all are on the front of the road there. And I'm going to turn the engine off quite often. And that's because they use their ears extensively when they're hunting. And so we're going to try not to make too much noise behind them. Try and turn the radio up. Now oh, that's the alpha at the back there. It's the alpha at the back, not that one, the one next to him. It's okay, yeah, I know you can't. Coming up next to us here, onto the road in front. That's an adult. These adults look very moth-eaten. Their ears have been nailed. There's another one through there. I'm gonna move up a little bit, Seb. Oh, this is just the best. Dogs on the hunt. Perfect evening light. Fantastic. Good evening. Are you leaving? Yeah, Okay, cool. Over here. Patricia, you're in Germany wondering how far they can roam in a day. Sometimes not very far, but sometimes they will go huge distances. One's climbing on the bush here. By huge distance, I mean probably, I don't know, an average of about 15 kilometers a day. Ah, oh, beautiful, okay. Now, there are some of them moving forward, some of them going into the Umluamati drainage line. Okay, let's carry on straight. Yeah, some of them going down into the drainage. Woo, it's going to be difficult. Okay, here are the others here.
I'm going to stay on the road. Bobby, very good question. How do you tell which one's the alpha? Well, it'll always be an adult. And there's an alpha pair, alpha male and female. And they will lead the hunt. That's the best way to tell. And then, of course, once you know, then you know. Because they're not difficult to recognize. Andrew, best approach is twin dams. They are still on the road, some of them. That's the alpha there. See his injury there? And you can see how moth-eaten his oh, yeah. ears are. Yeah. Now, Dwayne and Ruth, you're wondering who will replace the alpha if he dies. And, I mean, this chap certainly doesn't look long for this world. What on earth is that noise? I, d I don't know what that is. What on earth is that noise? I've never heard that before either. Sounds like a misfiring boat engine. I could, I, I've no idea what that is. Unless, unless it's a leopard growling at oh, them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a leopard. Yeah, that makes sense. That's exactly what it is. Yes. There's a leopard in there and it's being chased by these dogs. That's why the old boy's not interested. Here he comes. Hello, old fellow. And why the youngsters are. They've put a leopard up a tree here. Um, now, do we stay with them or do we go and see if we can see it? They're all going down there. I'm going to go, the alpha's going down there with them. I'm going to have to wait for this chap to move. They're all going now. We're almost certainly going to lose signal as we try and go down. The smell coming off that one there is now overpoweringly disgusting. I wonder which leopard it is. I wonder if it's not Hosanna. He was in this area. I can't move now. There's a dog in front of us. I'm not going to worry about that. The leopard stopped calling. One of them's just gone behind us and down in towards the drainage. We could try and get a view into the drainage, maybe. You see anything in there, Seb? Um, not yet, no. I would imagine he'll be pretty high up if he's in a tree. There. I think so. Hang on. No, it's not. It's a piece of white bush. Sorry. And now I've got tied up completely. In, okay, we're going to have to go down into the drainage. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's a wonderful sighting. Yeah, they're still there. There's still some up top here. They're reticent to go down. I wonder if we shouldn't wait. I'm three minds as to whether we should go down or wait here. Okay, we're going to go down. Hold on, everyone. Chasing, they're chasing a, a, a nyala or something through here. They're going herring down through here. Might be an empire. There's another chase going on this side. There they go. Another, so there are two chases going on. That one we're not going to catch. Hold on, everybody. Crazy madness going on now. They're leaping off inside here. Yeah, I am going to hang back. I don't want to make a mess of this hunt for them. They've gone in here.
Oh gosh, we're not going to get a view in there. <laughs> That's so exciting. Okay, let's go. Let's head down into the drainage. So what they were doing there, they were chasing, I think it was a kudu actually, that went herring across. Four of them went after that, something else, there they are. Four of them went after something else up this side. Did they catch? I don't know. Oh, we just need to be quiet, we need to let them listen. And as much as we want to hair up after them, we need to let them listen. And we need to let, we need to listen too. Half down there, half here. I'm just helping Andrew to try and get a view. Yeah, they're trotting down into the drainage, I think. Andrew, head into the drainage. They're all going down there. And here, this one's just running up here. Again, I'm going to have to switch off. That's the alpha. There's another one right next to us here, Seb. See them listening. They're listening, listening, listening. That one's heading off. These ones aren't moving. Another one coming out, popping out. There, they've caught. They've caught. They've caught something. <laughs> coming, Andrew. Andrew says they have caught. Oh dear, I'm not sure we're going to get through here without killing ourselves. Do you think we can get down there? Uh, uh, no, I'm going to go through this way. And they're still trotting down there. They've definitely killed something. It might be a diker. Diker's screel. Oh, I'm glad we didn't go down there. <laughs> I think that would have been the last. They all went up through here. The squeal and the wine came from here. Let's just twitch off and listen here. Just up ahead. There we are. Yeah, they're feeding. They're feeding just in here. I don't know why this guy's standing guard, maybe. Are you standing guard, old boy? Have you, do you not want to eat? Cobby, thank you. Sorry, old fellow, we're going to go past you. I know you might not want to eat, but we're going to go in here. There, here, coming straight towards us. They've killed. Now hold on tight, this is going to hurt slightly. Oh. Now this one's got a piece here, its own kill. Wow. They're all, they've, whatever it is, they've torn it to pieces, they've shredded it, and they've got, everyone's got a piece all around in this woodland here. Any idea what it is, Seb? Uh, it's it's like a steambook, hey? Maybe. Yeah. That's quite a lot of meat, though. Wow. Whew. <laughs> and there you are. You want to know if they eat the bones and the meat and everything? Yes, they do. I really didn't expect us to have a, a night like this. When these things disappeared south, I thought that was it. Oof, and something, somebody's just opened up the stomach content somewhere in amongst this lot. Isn't that interesting how the alpha held back? Almost on guard. 
You'll be as hungry as the rest of them. So everybody's having a piece. Everybody's separated away to eat their little piece of whatever it is. I think this is bigger than a this is bigger than a steenbok. That's a big piece of meat. It's, it's, yeah. That's the shank he's got there. Yeah. Ah, oh, wow. <laughs> now you see how important it is for us to be a little bit quiet when we're on the hunt because that squeal, for example, wouldn't have been heard if we'd been revving the engine behind them. And so while it does mean we won't see as many kills as we might, otherwise we're also ruining far less of them. is a substantial piece of meat. There are a whole lot in front of us here in the woodland. A little bit of a scrap. Oh, there we go. Now, Rafe, all the way from S Bonnie, Scotland, you're wondering if these dogs scavenge from human settlements. No, they don't. They eat only fresh meat. You don't have to be worried about them scavenging from human settlements at all. Hyenas will definitely do that. Wild dogs will not. They won't. They will hardly even scavenge from other predators. Hmm. I can smell this a fairly ra rank smell of the. Um, Um, what was I going to say? They smell quite a lot uh, of uh, stomach contents in my nose. Um, you're wondering, sea, is it sea pan? Sea pan? Wondering if sea pickle, sorry, I do apologize, sea pickle, not a name you hear every day. Uh, sea pickle, you're wondering if they're really related to what you call our civilized dogs. I've never owned a civilized dog, but I think I get your meaning. Um, they are related, but they're not closely related. The wolf, of course, is very closely related to our standard issue dogs, and indeed they can breed, uh, interbreed, and they all come from wolves. But these chaps separated from the wild dog line some time ago, many, many years ago, and I will just quickly check up their very closest relatives. And then we'll move around a bit. Isn't this wonderful? God, we're so lucky. I think this guy actually had the stomach contents. Do you think he had the stomach yeah, contents? Do you think that's why it looks so big yeah, and stinky? Yeah. Now they're having a little bit of a fight. They're just not being very polite with each other, are they? <laughs> John, what a question you've asked. So these chaps are separated by from the wolf by quite a few steps, and they're probably their closest living relative is probably the dole of India, and then are probably equidistant between them and the wolf and our domestic dogs. John, you say, do they have genuine affection for each other? E, John, who knows? What is genuine affection? Do we actually have genuine affection for each other, or is there always some sort of ulterior motive behind it? Um, I think, I don't know, it depends on how you def define affection. If I'm feeling particularly uncynical, then my answer would be yes, they enjoy seeing each other. If I'm feeling particularly biological, then I would say, well, why do they f enjoy seeing each other? What benefit does it have to them? And of course, then it becomes very easy to answer the question. There's a huge amount of benefit to them being together, looking after each other, being egalitarian. It works well for their species in the same way that not being like that works for lions. And in the same way that working in a relatively egalitarian way works for us as human beings, as a species. So do they feel genuine affection? 
I guess it depends entirely, John, on what your definition of genuine affection is. <laughs> what a lovely question. That'll have thousands of people on every side of the possible argument, which is the best kind of discussion to have, of course, because no one can prove anyone else right or wrong. It is very stinky in here. Andy, you say what is the wild dog's strongest scent? I'm going to just try and get out onto the road now, I think, because they're moving again. Andy, you, you'd, be, you'd hardly think that it was smell out here. Oh, there's one right in front of us. I'm going to run it over if I keep going. Because the smell in here is, uh, well, it's just not very nice. And I was feeling quite sorry for Seb because he's got some bad allergies at the moment. I'm not anymore because I think he's probably suffering less than I am. Here comes the old boy. Then I will try and get out of here and back out onto the road. Hello, old fella. Now, there was some talk this morning that he must have rabies because he's drooling. Um, that was from some of our viewers. Uh, that's not the case. It's not showing any other signs of rabies. There's no aggression, there's no confusion, there's no um, hydrophobia. No, um, yeah, there's absolutely no aggression to, his, to the other members of his pack. Let's just go out of here now. <laughs> I don't know, Andrea, that's an interesting question. You say the alpha looks a little bit rough. Is it the sign of a good leader? Um, I think it's the sign of an old leader. I think that any wild dog that gets to his age, I'd put him at at least six, actually, and most wild dogs are under five. So I'm going to say he's at least six or seven, and I don't know that for sure. I'm having a slight guess. Hold on. Um, I would say that it's just because he's old. I don't think it's necessarily a sign of a good leader. Some of human leaders are good looking and some look a bit mangled. Winston Churchill, for example, uh, was hardly a man of, uh, well, he was probably never going to grace the ramp w ramps of Milan. Barack Obama, quite the, quite the opposite. I'm being totally facetious comparing leadership in dogs, wild dog packs and humans. I think they're still in here. Here they go, they're on their hunt again. Can you believe it? Hungry dogs, on the hunt. Oh, one drinking, one running. Of course, this is now a completely full body workout for Seb because he's swinging himself around on the seat Leveling the camera. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's wonderful. Came within maybe a foot. Bobby, you're wondering if given a chance, would wild dogs kill a regular canine? You mean a regular dog? Uh, what was described as a civilized dog? Uh, yes, I think they probably would if they could get hold of it. And they do come into contact, contact quite regularly and it's a problem. It's why um, they have such a problem with rabies and canine distemper because of domestic dogs. So they do come into contact from time to time. And while these chaps will come off, uh, almost universally come off best, um, obviously the diseases still get passed. Oh, this play behavior is very typical after a successful hunt. Re-establishing the dominance hierarchy, licking the blood off each other. That's um, Andrew from Cheetah Plains' car, by the way. Shall we move a little closer, Seb? Unless they're about to come back this way. Maybe we just wait here. Sorry, I think let's just wait. It's just not great having the car in the background, but nothing we can do. <laughs> mm. 
Pangolin Warrior, you say, why do the dogs wa um, wag their tails when they're eating? Well, Pangolin Warrior, I don't think that it's necessarily that they're wagging them. There might be, but I also think that there is an element, of course, of enjoyment in it, in the same way that uh, <laughs> civilized dogs will, will wag their tails. I love that term. I'm going to use it. Civilized dogs will wag their tails. Well, so will these chaps. And you won't believe how close some of them are to us now. <laughs> They're just laying down next to us. And the old boy is lying possibly on his consort. Hi guys. Youngsters going away. And maybe this is this is probably the alpha pair, you know. Just enjoying each other's company. You know, thinking of days when they weren't quite as old as they are now. Don't we all think of days like that? They're now playing so close to the car, it's impossible for us to move. <laughs> this is awesome. Let me just move very slightly, Seb. I think we might be able to get a better picture. I don't think they're going to worry if we move. Oh! <laughs> I have to move quickly. Vulpine wolf girl, you want to know if they'd caught that leopard, would they have eaten it? I don't think they would have eaten it, no. But they certainly would have killed it. Oh, this is just too unbelievable. Hello. How are you? <laughs> nice to see you. I don't want the camera anymore. <laughs> youngsters going up there, alpha pair coming up in the front here. Ooh, look. She said her nipples are starting to show. I wonder if she's not pregnant already. It would be very early. Maybe it's just because she's old. I think they might be on the hunt again. Here we go. Bad evening. Exciting. exciting, she says. Yes, she's right. It's very exciting. It's the most exciting kind of an evening you can have out here. Oops. Now drinking water. Too spectacular. I do apologize, as you were. Keep going. Saying sorry to the dog for nearly getting in its way. Now, as it gets dark, of course, we will leave them because we won't put light on them. Oh, we got infrared. We could put the infrared on them. Let's keep moving with them. Down the road, it's getting a little chilly. The sun has set. They're going to take a shortcut down here. We're going to take the long way around. And all the time keeping a lookout both sides of the road because of course they could be coming from anywhere. They've all got blood all over their faces. Oh, look at that. <laughs> ah, wow. And that changing of the guard vibe has now fallen on the land. Birds have gone quiet. Possibly as a memorial for the 
fallen creature that the dogs devoured in less than five minutes. Beautiful stuff. Whew. Well, Seb is quite a welcome back, really, isn't it? An official one, anyway. No. Now, Lionheart Lightworks, you ask a very good question, but it's normally the other way around. You say, did or would the other dogs give up their food for the alpha? Normally, the alpha, of course, would do most of the catching, certainly on a big hunt. Uh, obviously, they all kill when they're chasing things like scrub hair. And I don't think he would beg. I don't think he would beg of the youngsters to feed him or to regurgitate for him. And so I don't think so. No, it's a very interesting question. I wonder if, you know, maybe he is struggling. He doesn't look, he doesn't lack condition. You know, he's not thin. So, I, you know, I think he's eating. But I, I'm not sure that he would beg. I think it would almost immediately lose his status within the pack if he begged. And sorry, I forgot to answer, I didn't get to the question that we had about what would happen when, or what will happen when he dies, who will take over. There is a beta pair as well, there is a second command, there's a very linear hierarchy amongst the dogs, and the beta male will take over as the alpha, if the alpha shakes off this mortal coil, and it passes on to the realm of wild dog heaven. Alrighty, we're going to keep following these doggies for as long as we can. In the meantime, Taylor would like to show you a large hippopotamus.